All right, ready to dive deep. Let's do it. Today, uh, we're taking a look at Scientology. Right. Trying to unpack how they build such intense loyalty among their members. Yeah. And you know how they deal with people who uh, who criticize them? Mm -hmm. We've got some really interesting sources for this one. Okay. We've got an ex-Scientologist on YouTube who's kind of giving us the inside scoop. Oh, wow. First-hand account. Yeah. And an article from Courthouse News Service that gets into some of their legal tactics. Interesting. So we're covering both, like, the personal experience and the legal side of things. Exactly. We're trying to paint the full picture here. Okay, cool. So Scientology, it's not like traditional religions. Right. They don't just rely on faith to keep people committed. They've got this whole system. Yeah, it's very... Uh... Very structured. Very structured. Yeah, almost like, I don't know, it's like they build these invisible walls around their members. It's fascinating, isn't it? They make you believe that you're choosing to stay while simultaneously kind of discouraging any outside influence that might challenge those beliefs. It's like building a fortress of belief. Yeah, a fortress of belief. I like that. And it seems like a big part of how they do that is by introducing this idea of suppressive persons. Or SPs. Ah, yes, the SPs. Now, from what we're gathering from our sources, this is where things start to get really kind of manipulative. Yeah, it gets interesting. See, Scientology teaches that a certain percentage of the population are these inherently negative SPs. They say it's like 20%, which is a pretty significant chunk. Wow, 20%. So like one in five people you meet. Basically, and here's the catch. Yeah. Anyone who criticizes Scientology, even family, even family, instantly labeled an SP. It's like if your own mother questions what you believe, boom. Right. Suddenly she's the problem. She's the negative influence, not the organization or its teachings. Exactly. It's brilliant in a way. It's a manipulation tactic creating the self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like they've got an answer for everything, you know, no matter what you throw at them. Right. Because by labeling any criticism as inherently negative, they essentially give themselves permission to isolate members from anyone who might challenge their beliefs. And our ex-Scientologist source, he actually compares it to... Oh, wow. Okay. He compares it to the way totalitarian regimes demonize certain groups mm -hmm. to justify extreme actions against them. Interesting parallel. I, mean, I know it sounds extreme at first, yeah. but when you really break it down... The psychology behind it, right. it's kind of similar. Yeah, you dehumanize a group, and suddenly any action taken against them becomes justifiable right. in the minds of believers. And this is exactly how that fear of SPs mm -hmm. becomes such a powerful tool for ensuring obedience and preventing people from leaving. It's like this constant fear that everyone outside of Scientology is trying to get you. Exactly. And that the only safe place to be is within the organization. Right, and it's not just about the actions, it's the language they use, too. Right. Our source talks about how words like suppression and antisocial personality, they take on this whole new meaning. Like a loaded language almost. It is. It's like they've created their own dictionary specifically designed to manipulate thought. It's wild. Like you said, it's brilliant, but it's also incredibly messed up. It's very effective, and that's what makes it so insidious. And it's not just suppressive person. They also use this term potential trouble source, right? PTS or something like that. Exactly, PTS. And that essentially means anyone connected to an SP is also a threat. So even if you're not directly criticizing Scientology, right. if you're close to someone who is, you're suspect. You're guilty by association, basically. It's like they're saying you can't even have a conversation with someone who has doubts. Well, because according to their teachings, those doubts could be contagious. They could hinder your spiritual progress. Wow. So it's like... Choose us or choose your family and friends. It can feel like that. Yeah, imagine being told that talking to your skeptical father <laughs> or your best friend from high school could somehow damage your soul. It's heavy stuff, man. <laughs> it is, and it's especially troubling because this fear of disconnection, it's ingrained from day one. Right, right from the very beginning. They literally tell people that family problems stem from being connected to an SP. It's like they preemptively shift the blame. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's brilliant. It's a way to control the narrative before any problems even arise. So instead of looking inward at their own teachings, they're saying, nope, it's your fault for having contact with this negative person. Exactly. Any personal struggle, any doubt, it's not Scientology's fault. It's the fault of that outsider, that SP, that PTS. It's like they're creating this closed loop, mm -hmm. making it nearly impossible to escape the cycle of control. It's very difficult once you're in that mindset to even consider alternative explanations. And this is just the beginning, right? Yeah, we're just scratching the surface here. Because this control, it becomes even more apparent when you look at how Scientology 
handles any kind of criticism from the outside world. Oh, absolutely. Like how they react when someone dares to question them publicly. They do not take criticism lightly. Not at all. And that's something that we're going to untack when we come back. Right. Sounds good. It's like any criticism is seen as this like personal attack on their entire belief system. Oh, absolutely. And when that happens, that's when Scientology's uh, attack, the attacker policy comes into play. And that's no joke. Our sources get into just how aggressive this approach really is. Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, our YouTube guy actually quotes L. Ron Hubbard directly. Oh, okay. Let's hear it. He says, don't ever tamely submit to an investigation of us. Make it rough, rough on attackers all the way. Wow, no subtlety there. No kidding. Yep. It's pretty intense, and it really highlights how they're not just about defending themselves. Right. It's about actively silencing anyone who dares to question them. Absolutely. Silencing dissent by any means necessary. And sadly, this isn't just some abstract idea. Our Courthouse News article shows how this plays out in real life. Yeah, they're not afraid to get the legal system involved. No, not at all. They're notorious for using lawsuits as a weapon to silence their critics. It's like they figure they've got deeper pockets than most people who speak out against them. Right. They drag these cases out for years, costing their opponents a ton of money and energy, hoping they'll just give up. It's a war of attrition. Exactly. And the article goes into this case of a Jane Doe who's suing the church, claiming they basically looked the other way when it came to sexual abuse of minors. That's awful. It's a horrific story. And sadly, it's just one of many that we're hearing from former Scientologists. So she claims that she was abused by this recruiter for Sea Org. Sea Org. That's like their hardcore inner circle, right? The most dedicated members. Yeah. And get this. She says when she actually reported the abuse, they pressured her to marry her abuser. Oh, my God. She was only 15 at the time. That's horrific. Yeah. And she didn't manage to escape until she was 23. Now she's trying to sue, and guess what? What? They can't find David Miscavige to serve him. He's like the head of Scientology, right? Mm -hmm. He's the guy, and he's totally gone AWOL. Wow, so not only are they making it hard for her to get justice, but their leader is actively avoiding accountability. Exactly, and the judge on the case is not happy about it. I bet he isn't. The article actually quotes the judge, saying, He's got teams of lawyers. He should just appear and defend himself. It's very frustrating for me. We've reached a new level of craziness. I mean, when a judge is calling you crazy, you know it's bad. No kidding. But here's the thing. This isn't just happening to this one woman. Right. They've pulled the same stunts on bigger names, too, like Leah Remini. Oh, wow, the actress. She's yeah. been really outspoken against them. Yeah, she's been trying to serve Miss Gavage with a lawsuit as well. And it's the same story. Dodging service, filing endless motions, anything to run out the clock. It's a pattern of behavior. Mm. It makes you wonder, if Scientology is so confident in their beliefs, why are they so afraid to address these accusations head on? Right. It's like their whole MO is about control. Mm. Controlling the information, controlling the narrative, and ultimately controlling how their members see the world. And it worked for a long time, but I think things are changing. Mm. How so? Well, both of our sources actually point to the same thing, the Internet. It's funny you mention the Internet because our YouTube guy... He actually calls it Scientology's Berlin Wall. The Berlin Wall. Yeah. He says it's strong, imposing, but ultimately destined to crumble. What do you think about that analogy? I think it's uh, it's pretty apt when you think about the challenges Scientology is facing in this digital age, you know? Right. For decades, they were able to control the narrative. They thrived in secrecy. Mm -hmm. But the internet changes everything. It's true. It's like trying to hold back a tidal wave of information. Exactly. Ex-members can share their experiences. Critical information is everywhere, and it's getting harder and harder for them to keep a lid on it. Right. And our YouTube source even points out that despite all their efforts to combat this, it seems like their membership is actually declining. It's not surprising, is it? Not really. Their tactics might have worked in the past, but people are more informed now, more skeptical. They're not just going to take things at face value anymore. That's true. But let's not forget, Scientology still has a lot of money, a lot of influence. Oh, absolutely. Can a few YouTube videos really make a dent in that? Well, I think it's bigger than just a few videos. It's about a shift in the overall awareness. Okay. The more people speak out, the more these legal battles come to light. It chips away at that wall of secrecy. It's like death by a thousand cuts. Exactly. And it forces them to operate in a world where they can't control the information quite as easily. So it's not just about individual 
people leaving Scientology. It's about changing the system itself. I think so. It's about creating a world where potential recruits know what they're getting into, right. where critical thinking is encouraged, where people are skeptical. Yeah. And the internet, despite all its flaws, has become an incredibly powerful tool for that. Couldn't agree more. This has been a fascinating deep dive. It really has. As we wrap things up here, what's the one thing you really hope listeners take away from this look at Scientology? I'd say the biggest takeaway is that even the most seemingly impenetrable systems, they're not immune to the truth. Mm. And the truth has a way of bubbling to the surface, especially in the age of information. That is a great point to end on. So to everyone listening, remember to question everything, think critically, and never underestimate the power of an informed mind. Until next time, keep diving deep.